So I'm back here at Herp Time in Southern California. Last time I was here, I did a video on Armin's really amazing anole lizards. Well, he has so many more cool lizards than just cool anoles here. And in this room, there's some of the coolest reptiles in this building, including right over there, somebody special who I can't wait to introduce you guys to. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. This is the Cuban stream anole. So it's Anolis vermiculatus, and they're a super cool, large species of anole. And they're always gonna be found near water, and they'll dive into water to retreat from predators, and they can stay underwater for like 15, 20 minutes. And um, they also will dive in water to grab things like fish, and they'll eat them. They eat lots of insects, but they, they are one of the few species of anole, maybe the only, that'll actually go out of the way to eat fish. When they dive underwater, their skin is completely hydrophobic. So it beads the water off and they can come right back out of the water completely dry. So we have set up this hydro chamber. It's an aquarium, right? Yep. And we are going to test out the theory of hydrophobic lizards. In theory, he would be on the side of the stream and he'd jump in and stay at the bottom, but we're gonna give him a little dunk. It's not gonna bug him or anything. All right. but Ready? And when we pull him out, you'll see he'll be completely dry. Lower Mr. Solo into, well, yeah. And they can actually breathe underwater because their though. skin will trap air and they'll have that little, that air is all coming up from his body. That's crazy. It yep. gives him like this sheen, but there's like this layer of air all over his body. Yep. And then he is perfectly dry. No towel necessary. That was like the coolest reptile demonstration I have seen since the last coolest reptile demonstration that I've seen. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 All right. What uh, what other things are you and your ladder friend going to show so us here? So these are Jamaican giant anoles, and they're really quick. Oh, oh there you be. Yeah, you got to be ready for anything with these guys. I am far too slow to be keeping these lizards. Yeah. I'm used to ball pythons where it's like phone rings here sit on the table for three hours while I talk on the phone so this is a really cool species for display obviously they're not friendly at all apparently and they are I'm getting a good shot of your fingers like a giant giant green and all but a little cooler okay where wait 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 right there right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. it's a Noel Scarmani the Jamaican giant and all. They used to be a invasive population in Florida, but they haven't been around for a while. But look at that cool tiger pattern on that dewlap. That's one of the coolest dewlaps I've ever seen. It's really cool. Yeah. And they got these cool spikes all down their tails and backs. Yeah, that is a really cool crest. Very dinosaur-like. Mm -hmm. This is a really cool species. It's a mainland species, so it's coming from South America, uh, like the Amazon. This is Anolis bombiceps, but they're just really strange looking species. They got the super long legs because they're gonna be on the ground. Um, and as you can tell, they're on the ground near leaves and that's what they're meant to you know, mimic and look like, so. Now look at that really long neck. That looks like a giraffe. Like Giraffosaurus, I think would be a better name for this anole, which I just came up with off the top of my head just now. Josh did not. <laughs> Here, I'll show you his dewlap. This is a boy, so he has a cool dewlap. <gasps> Dude. Bright blue. That's like a jewel of the Nile right there. Yeah, again, in the leaf litter, everything's brown, so that's really gonna stand out to the females or other males he's trying to thwart away. So this is Polychris peruvianus, or the Peruvian monkey lizard. Some people call them the monkey anole, but they are not an anole, they're a different genus. But they're just super cool. They're also from as yeah, you know, Peru, so yeah, the I, Amazon. And they're called monkey lizards because they eat monkeys, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. So a lizard that size, it would take a long time for it to eat a monkey. Exactly. You yeah. should be a scientist. I'm are you? Saying I keep writing these papers that never get published and I don't know why. But no, th these are like one of the coolest Amazon lizards that are out there. Yeah. They look like they're, you know, wise beyond their years. Just they just have a certain, you know, intelligence in their eyes. It's a really cool animal. Yeah, yeah. Unlike me. <laughs> so this is an South American or Amazonian diving lizard. They are the only species, as far as I know, in their genus. And they're just such a cool lizard. They're kind of like a weird 
Shinosaurus looking lizard, yeah. but from South America. Really, really a cool lizard that I'm excited to have some. And I have a proven pair, so hopefully I can get them to breed. Now, can this one dive in the uh, aquarium over there? We can see what happens. I don't think he's as hydrophobic as the Cuban streamer and all, but we can test it out. There is only one way to find out. I've never done it, so we're gonna find out Let's right now. Let's do it. Now. This is science happening right now. Let's do it. Zilla has everything you need for your reptile pets, from caging to lighting and everything in between. To see their entire catalog and find out where you can get Zilla products near you, visit ZillaRules.com. So this is either gonna be awesome or he's, we're gonna have to get him out of there real quick. All right. All right, here we go. Ready? Down the hatch. Uh, yeah, he, 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 he's not hydrophobic. He's not. No. You, but he you, still looks comfortable. You okay there, buddy? But in the wild, these guys would retreat into streams, ponds, whatever. A predator is chasing them, boom, right in the water. Yeah. And for these guys, I assume it's not much of an issue because in the Amazon, the waters, temperatures are kind of the same temperature as outside. Right. So he's not going to cool down too much if he was still wet. I think he is fine. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an Abronia lythrochila, lythrochilla, however you want to say it. I used to have a lot of Abronia. I've slimmed down a lot. This is one species that I had to keep going. So this is a captive bred female that hopefully um, is gravid and will have some babies. Wow. Yeah. So their care is almost like a chameleon where you need a screen cage and they need a lot of ventilation, but a lot of misting and humidity at the same time. The difference is they need a cooler environment because they are from cloud forests in Mexico. So they need to be 70s or below, ideally. They still need somewhat of a hot spot where they can bask a little, but they need somewhere to retreat where it's, you know, 65 to 70 degrees. Um, otherwise, they can overheat, and that's one way to definitely kill them. Also, dehydration, they need a lot of water. Um, so that's another way that people don't do good with them. So this guy kind of looks like a skink but it is in fact an alligator lizard and even more in fact it is an abronia so this used to be in the genus mesapsis but now it is abronia so this is abronia morletti it's not an arboreal lizard even it's semi but it's more of a ground dwelling species of alligator lizard uh same thing it gives live birth and it's from central america but um yeah it's much different than the arboreal ones we're used to seeing it's very different. I mean, look at those tiger stripes down the side, clear back. This is an adult female. She's actually had uh, a few litters before, so she's proven and that's how big they get. So those are the Abronia, but you also work with alligator lizards that are terrestrial. Yes. That are native to right here in the United States. Yep. And I know that you have one of my favorites. Yep. Let's, we'll show you right now. Yeah. All right. Take a look at this guy. This is a Madrian alligator lizard. Um, is he dancing? Uh, what's what's going on here? He's trying to you know, normally on the ground He would do that just kind of they just kind of move that way sometimes to I would assume to maybe look like a leaf in the wind I think he's getting down getting funky. Yeah, I don't know what he's up to but they're cool So these guys actually retain that striped pattern that those barred pattern on its back all the way into adulthood. And this is an adult. This is all the bigger they get. And these are found in Southern Arizona. There's a small pocket of these in Southern Arizona. Man, these are just my favorite alligator lizards. These are just awesome. They're really simple care too. It's not like an abronia where you breathe wrong and it dies. Right. These are a lot simpler, hardier, and just really, really cool lizards. And very personable. Yes. Now, you have bred these. You yes. have babies right now, don't you? Yeah. Look at all those baby Madrian alligator lizards. They are so cute when they're babies. But unlike the adults, they are born much darker. They have those black sides to them, much more bold pattern across their back, which, you know, as we see from the adult there, they retain that into adulthood. Now, for these guys, Incubation is pretty tricky because you have to incubate these, you know, pretty much on the cooler side. Mm -hmm. So what do you incubate? What, what is your incubation temperatures on so these? So I incubated these guys between 73 to 74 degrees. See, that's pretty yeah. chilly for incubation. Yeah, people don't realize these are a montane species. So they're up in the mountains where in Arizona, in the winter, these guys are hibernating under snow. Basically. Right. So 
they they are in an area where it gets a lot cooler the ground temperature obviously is consistent but 73 74 worked for this clutch i've had clutches where i tried warmer and they didn't come out so good and it yeah. didn't work so definitely want to keep it in that lower 70s range and then are you brumating the adults to stimulate yeah. breeding like other like like yeah, colubrids, like for a instance. colubrid you treat you take care of them just like a colubrid yeah how long is the uh, incubation on them these hatched at 47 days 47 days yeah so not pretty too bad. short yeah not too bad so in this big enclosure we've got the biggest surprise look at this dude look at this big beautiful croc monitor Croc monitors, there's just something so unbelievably personal about them. And they are kind of dog tame. Yeah. yeah. But they're not for everybody. Exactly. So obviously he has a huge enclosure for a reason. He's active and he climbs a lot. So I've done the best I could to give him that space. Um, and he's about six years old now. Uh, he's not as big as he can be. He's about like eight and a half, nine feet right now, including the tail. They can get obviously a few feet longer sure. than that. All right, so his name is Moose. Come here. Come here, buddy. He might think that's a rat. Yeah, he does. He thinks my <laughs> microphone cover is a big old rat, but it doesn't smell like a rat, I hope. Yeah, he's pretty smart, so. Look at that intelligence. Look at him figuring out what I am, what my camera is, what the sock over the microphone is. Hi, buddy. How are you? Oh man, look at how gentle. Just smelling me, figuring stuff out. Just one of the most intelligent lizards out there. Totally checking me out, smelling that new smell. But their skin feels really different from other monitor lizards. It's not as beaded, it's like a little bit more smooth than if you're petting like a water monitor. All right guys, I'm going in with moose here. Look at how big this cage is. Y'all know that I'm a Sasquatch and I could move into this place. As a matter of fact, this place is probably bigger than the place I do actually live. But look at this beauty. Hi, come here. But look at this, I'm standing in his environment, in his enclosure, sharing his space, and he is just completely letting me. He's completely chill. So crocodile monitors are from New Guinea. And I've always wanted to go to New Guinea to find these in the wild, but these are so arboreal that they're up in the canopies. Even adults, even huge adults are up in the canopy and they are extremely difficult to find in the wild. Yes, hi buddy. And look at this, still checking me out. So curious, no aggression whatsoever. These guys are so gentle. These guys are total gentle giants. But don't be fooled, there are a few croc monitors that are not like this one. And this one is like this simply because Armin works with this croc monitor enough to get him to the point where he does not see people as a threat and therefore he will show no aggression to us. But man, this is amazing. What an amazing experience. I'm just going to pet you under your chin there, buddy. Look at that. No hissing, no puffing up, just totally curious. So how often do you work with him? Well, I mean, I see him every day. I give him a, you know, little pets under his chin every day. And then I feed him, you know, every three or four days. So I'm working with him daily. Um, take him out to clean the enclosure and just hang out with him maybe once a week. So it just depends. But he, uh, he was a wild caught import as a baby. Someone else raised him up and worked with him a lot. And I've just continued to, and it's just, he's continued to become a really cool, social, intelligent lizard. Right. I feed him rats, I feed him chicken, I feed him chicks. I try to vary it a lot. Also, they're in the wild, they're mostly like bird eaters. Yeah. So that's why I try to feed them chicken and chicks more than rats because they can get kind of fat and uh, they're, an, they're a tree monitor essentially. So they need a leaner diet and they need to, you know, have that leaner build. So he's a lot leaner build than a lot of the larger crocs you'll see in captivity. He's been doing good and they eat a lot less than you would expect because, you know, in the wild, they're lucky if they grab a bird. So. Right, right. And this is essentially the world's biggest tree monitor. Yep, you know? exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, 40, 50 feet up in the trees chasing things up there. So, yeah. And they do have the largest teeth of any lizard on Earth. Right. Larger than the Komodo. So, he is, he is a puppy, but he's not a puppy you want to get bit by. So, basically, you can see that ridge right past his nostril up there. That's where his teeth start. Wow. Uh, yeah, so his teeth are, you know, every bit of half an inch or more. Yep, he needs those big teeth to get through all those feathers to actually hang on to that bird 
Otherwise, he's not going to eat in the wild. Look at how curious he is. He's just coming right to me. Hi, sweetheart. Same with those big claws. Yeah. Not oh. like a water monitor claws. These claws are way sharper. Those are... And they're meant to, you know, dig into a tree and go vertical. Right. Those are raptor claws. Yep. Yeah, to keep them correctly, you need to give them, you know, a room size enclosure. Absolutely. It's not very fair to... Most of them are uh, wild caught. Even a captive bred, it's not fair to give it a vision cage. Right. Nothing against a vision cage, but for an eight-foot lizard, they need a little more than that. Absolutely. So... Absolutely. Unbelievable. Can I, can I get that high five? Can I just, oh man, <laughs> rattle off. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you guys, when you get an opportunity like that to interact with such a big, beautiful, intelligent monitor lizard, it just fills you with such a sense of awe and reminds at least me why I am so passionate about reptiles. Anyway guys, there's lots more reptile adventures coming up, so do hit that subscribe button when you do hit that bell so you never miss an upload. Give this video a like, and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.